spending time with Chester, his fame, um, his recognition in the country. He, he was just a simple, humble person. Um, he gave so much back to his community. Um, I walked a long journey with him when he started the Chester Williams Foundation. He said, we agreed both that there are so many up and coming young, poor black rugby players, they will never be given an opportunity. And he had given many scholarships out to them. But there's also an informal settlement in Paul that's named after him. And he's, he's always just given back to the community. So I was fortunate, you know, it was more like a son to me. Uh, we, we had many brides and parties together. I was there when he got married, um, the birth of his children. So, you know, my only regret is that he had not been able to spend a lot of time with his family. Um, he, he was not um, employed as a coach in the national team. He applied for many positions within the local rugby. There was just a block and he was forced to go and coach overseas like Tunisia, Uganda, Romania. And then today in Romania, um, you know, they, they're going to name a stadium after him, a street after him. Um, and the last four years, he's been at home with his family after he got the work job at the University of Western Cape uh, to take their, to, uh, to train their team. I mean, Jesse became a hero of so many people, and especially, you know, black and colored players. Um, and for me, it was a different. And I was, I was blown away the first time I took to the field, training field with Chester. I couldn't believe it. And we become, obviously, became big mates, you know, in years gone by. And the lessons I've learned from him, you know, the, the motivation, the inspiration that he gave to me as a player. Uh, to be honest, uh, the first time I, I saw Chester play for the Springboks, then I actually realized that, hey, maybe I can also play one sometime for the Springboks. And it goes for many a black and colored player as well. So he paved the way for us. Uh, him, obviously, together with a guy like Edel Tobias. Those guys, you know, we, we need to celebrate those guys and, 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 and say thank you for what they've done, the impact they had, not only just in sport, but in life in general. He was an absolute, fantastic, remarkable, soft-spoken human being, uh, always at time for his neighbor. Uh, and, and for that, I will remember that for a long, long time. It was very somber, particularly when the remains of uh, the former president of Zimbabwe, Robert Mugabe's remains arrived in the country at the international airport named after him. The delegation that went to repatriate his remains was led by Kembo Muhadi, the vice president of uh, Zimbabwe. He was accompanied by various other government dignitaries and leadership of the Politburo within ZANU-PF and other family members who went alongside to, uh, to, to uh, Grace Mugabe was already in Singapore with other family members, including the children, whom when Robert Mugabe passed away last Friday were around him when he passed away. Those are the reports, but the remains are now back in the country. We are gathered here to receive his body. We are grieved and we say our sincere and deep condolences to the former first lady who has brought the body, Amai Grace Mugabe, with us here, and the children who are also here, and the immediate family who are here. Leo Mugabe, the family spokesperson, says that uh, the local chiefs in Zimba, which is the village where Robert Mugabe hails from and has his homestead and spent most of his time, those local chiefs will decide and they have decided on where he will be buried. It's just a matter of communication and uh, they will alert the nation and the globe on when that will is, is done. But you've also got a perspective that Mugabe should be laid to rest at Heritage Acre, which is where liberation icons, those who have played a pivotal role in the heritage of Zimbabwe and played towards contributing to social cohesion and social upward mobility of the people of Zimbabwe. That's where they are buried and commanders of the, South, of the Zimbabwean Defense Force. That's where they are laid to rest. Flanked by three lawyers, party leaders and supporters, the EFF leader arrived at the Hawks' offices to announce he is court ready. But Julius Malema wouldn't make a sworn statement. If they want to charge, they must charge and uh, will speak uh, in court. Um, we, we don't think that there is uh, anything to answer to.
uh, really, because uh, they are being uh, mischievous and uh, uh, will deal with those matters uh, at an appropriate forum uh, if they decide to proceed uh, uh, with the case. Asked about a Daily Maverick article linking him to millions of rand looted from the now defunct VBS bank, Malema dismissed the allegations. But that won't stop the official opposition from taking action. The DA intends reporting Malema to Parliament's Ethics Committee. This anger that is built in us. Malema says he won't take any action against the publication or the journalist. I don't have time for that. I mean, uh, in which courts? In which courts? So I'm not going to do that. I don't waste time on, on Polyphon Vic. I don't have the money. If I have to take Polyphon Vic to court, I have to go and ask my brothers to come and finance that. And then, hey, this is for Malema's benefit. VBS. The VBS money <laughs> is being funny. used to go to court. On Robert Mugabe's passing, Malema says the party will send a delegation to the former Zimbabwean president's funeral. Uh, he's our leader, he's our icon. Let's all uh, remember Mugabe the best way we know how. If, he, if he's a villain to you, don't impose that on us. And he's told his supporters both the NPA and Hawks are afraid to put every forum in its place. The lobby group is trying to exert pressure for prosecutions against Malema to go ahead. Cloudy Motswineng, short a matric certificate, but not self-confidence. I'm very educated. I'm the main man. There was never any advertisement, internal or otherwise, for the position of COO at the SABC. Even if there was, Motswineng says, it would have been a waste of time. I can tell you, in the SABC, no one was better than me, even if they advertise it. True to form, the self-proclaimed organic intellectual says those who believe him to be uneducated have no idea of his accomplishments. I lecture at the universities. Mm. <laughs> I wonder how many people who are saying I'm uneducated. Mm. Even the, at, at, at the vet business school, mm. I lecture and my lectures mm. about leadership, mm. they have turned them as part of their syllabus. Mm. Who said I'm, no, I'm, I'm uneducated, mm. chairperson? Mm. Not long after Motswineng's testimony about his lecturing prowess, a tweet from the business school in question, saying he spoke at a breakfast panel but has never lectured at their institution. Most people who are excelling mm. is talent, is not those uh, 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 qualifications. Motswineng didn't see what the fuss is about, claiming he was in good company at the SABC. There are many people at the SABC that don't have metric. Yes. Even today. Yes. Uh, there, uh, uh, the SABC has, I mean, even on record publicly. So I think Dr. Tangobane said the same thing yesterday. Yes, there are many people. Actually, yes. SABC chairperson. Yes. You, you also look at talent. Yes. You, you know SABC chairperson, even if you can come with a degree, if you don't have talent, mm. if you are not a singer, you are not a singer. Mm. He claims that under his watch, the SABC was profitable and the current leadership is doomed to fail. Even if chairperson they can be given bailout, they will never take SABC anyway. Motswanen continues on the stand on Wednesday. Michael Apple, Johannesburg. No one has ever listened to my story. Listen properly. Claudi Motswaneng's second day at the state capture inquiry was almost all about a 2014 decision to stop giving airtime to anti-government service delivery protests. Showing violence, glamorizing violence, it is unlawful. He says he didn't explicitly ban anything. They just wouldn't show the full picture. When the journalist goes there, they can cover it, mm. uh, have the records, mm. but not show those uh, 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 pictures uh, 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 because the excess don't glamorize violence. You will show but responsibility, so chairperson. The issue is you changing the mandate of the SAPC 
to say to the SABC journalists, do not cover violent protests. That is the issue. I will submit I follow the law. Fresh air. For Motswaneng, there are no regrets. I will die with the statement, Chairperson. Did he ever threaten journalists who disagreed with him? Did you also tell them that you must adapt or find a job elsewhere? I, I, I don't know that English happens when I say I, 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 I adapt, but what I remember very well, I said everyone should adhere. Motswaneng says he never fired anyone. Just like former President Jacob Zuma and the Gupta's Waterkloof landing, he says he's a victim of name dropping. Many people were supposed to be dismissed when management they want to dismiss them. And they go there and use my name, Chairperson. Motswaneng's time on the stand was about 90% serious and 10% giggles when the questions got tough. I'm sure he'd approve. <laughs> <It's difficult. laughs> His evidence continues on Thursday. Michael Apple, Johannesburg. We need to stop this thing in its tracks before serious action is taken against us. Our government cannot allow for people to come from anywhere and everywhere and come into this country without documentation, without indicating why they are here.